Yes, it's not too difficult to ruin your boxing career, whether it's making bad decisions, listening to the wrong people, or just simply getting a little bit greedy. So does Anthony Yard now fall into one of these categories? Well, I suppose it's early days still, but the feud between him and old Frankie Boy seems to be showing no signs of fizzling out, and it couldn't have come at a worse time, could it? We've got Frank and Edward all tight with Turkey, the light heavyweight scene's got a load of eyeballs on it, Viterba Bivliov is going to fight Bivoviliov for the Undisputed, yes, there's a lot of big opportunities out there at this present moment. So why does old Yardy want nothing more to do with the man at the top of his game, who's helping to make the biggest, the best and the most financially lucrative fights happen these days? Well, let's have a little look, shall we? So as we know, the 32-year-old light heavyweight has been on Frank's books since his debut. Although only a handful of amateur fights to his name, Frank saw the potential and after sparking out 18 Milkman, his first world title venture would happen to be a very noble effort, but sadly unsuccessful. Upon returning, he remained exciting but had an unexpected blip against Lyndon Arthur of which he revenged the second time round. Then Baturba Bibliov came and crushed his world title dreams once more in what was another very brave effort. But then... Well, fuck all really. A year and a half has passed with two wins to his name against a journeyman and a bloke called Mark. A bit surprising really since his stock rose massively in the Baturbi of defeat. So why is this the case? Although losing we all said ruddy well done Yardy me old son. You showed great plums and you always provide us with excitement, cracking stuff. Have a little time off and then how's about a little domestic dust up with the likes of a Craig Richards, maybe Callum Smith or best of all Joshua Buatzi who after beating Dan Aziz seemed to be the front runner. However, negotiations showed to be rather slow and a little bit rocky. Yard, what's going on man? Look, we've got a sick venue, a stadium, we've got a date. What's the delay, what's happening? I'm out here working man. Let's go, let's make it happen. Now as Buatzi said, everything was in place. The stadium was set and according to the media, it was a straight 50-50 split. Very fair if you ask me, what could be the hold up? And then in April, it all came to light. So right now, my previous promotional contracts have expired. My team are doing their job back end to negotiate the best deal for me going forward. Once that's all sorted, me and you can start negotiations for the fight. Well, yes, it was a bit of a surprise, not only because Frank seemed to have done a bloody good job for Anthony, but also because with the Saudi dollar floating around and Frank pulling the strings, surely the best opportunities were clearly with Queensbury and Matchroom. Either way, though, it appeared he wanted to be more in control of his own destiny and fight on as a free agent. But... Frank said, hold up, oh no, you fucking don't. And the whole thing's getting messier than the backseat in fake taxi. And here we are. So ultimately, Yard thinks he's out of contract and Frank thinks he's still under contract. There's obviously a technicality in the deal that both are disagreeing on and since it's all kicking off in legal battles behind the scene, we are a bit in the dark still about this situation. But here are some likely scenarios. Maybe Yard has been signing multi-fight deals with Frank and after his last fight, he feels the deal is done. But maybe Frank feels that at least one of the fights don't count because they were essentially journeymen and Frank may have expected one to be a big headliner. Then again, maybe there was a multi-fight deal in place but within a certain time frame that Yard feels has now expired, similar to the Lawrence Acoli situation, or maybe it all just boils down to maximising his money's worth. Which, by the way, you can maximise your money's worth by getting some fucking lovely boxing clobber over at Sparco. Yes, me and the proper podcast chaps have created this blinding store for our double favourite boxing fans and we've got you everything you need over there to look absolutely fucking mustard. Link in the comments, bosh. Now, where were we? Yes, everyone seems to think that the Buatzi deal was pretty much agreed. Sky were on board, TNT were on board, and it was 50-50 down the middle just waiting on purse bids. But Frank, in an interview with Box Nation, alluded to Yard's team demanding some sort of guarantee. He reckons the expectation levels from Anthony's management are way too high, and he threw out a figure of 5 million quid. He is being advised badly. And he's going to regret this in years to come. And you know what happens with a purse bid? You find out your true worth. And maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe someone will come in and pay him £5 million. I doubt it. Anywhere near that, but maybe they will. So as we can see, old Frankie boy is not too happy about all this, and by the sounds of it, not too happy with old Tunde, ultimately. Now if we say it is five million, obviously Frankie isn't willing to put up this amount, and he feels the purse bids will show the true reflection of the fight. Which I suppose he's right, really. However, Anthony Yard then withdrew from the purse bids, and the whole thing collapsed. So maybe it's a case of Yard feeling with Frank not putting up any guarantee he's in breach of contract in some way, and he feels Frank's 
should not be getting his cut from the fight. A cut that would eat into Yard's purse, essentially. Maybe. Possibly. Fuck knows, I'm just riffing. But ultimately someone somewhere is reading that contract very wrong. And I've gotta be honest, I just can't help but think it could be Team Yard. Hear me out. Now as we know, Frank certainly is no angel when it comes to this sort of stuff. His track record and reputation ain't exactly flawless and he's been to court more times than I've been to the fucking bog. In fact, he's probably got his own fucking dressing room next to the judge. But either way, I find it hard to believe that a man who's been in boxing the best part of half a century has dealt with nearly every famous British boxer there's been as well as some of the most prolific boxers in history would write a contract giving a fighter he's worked so hard for since day one an easy way out when a massive fight is on the horizon. I'm not saying Frank's right morally in all this, I'm saying he may be right legally. I mean, let's be honest, Frank used to work with Don King, that bloke's contracts were bloody lethal, you'd sign with him for a fight and the next minute he owns your house and your pet fucking dog. I'm sure that total bellend probably taught Frank a thing or two. But yes, as we know, Frank's more than well scored in this department and he probably knows full well where he stands. Now the big problem is, if Yard don't back down, and Frank's got to be in his bonnet about all this, as we've seen Frank do in the past, he could take Team Yard straight to the cleaners, which may put the remainder of his career in limbo. For a start, Yard probably can't fight elsewhere for the time being, because that may be in breach of contract in which Frank could sue. That means all the while this legal dispute is going on, Yard is out the ring and earning naff all. Then even if things are resolved but the dust don't fully settle, he may have issues getting on Saudi cards where the big money is because Frank's basically running the show. And then what options does he have left in terms of promotional outfits? Eddie made it clear he wouldn't sign any the yard due to not wanting to upset the newfound relationship with Frank. Boxer may be an option, but how many massive fights are there other than Buatzi, who's now signed to fight Willie Hutchinson anyway? And as a promotional free agent, how much bargaining power does he actually have? Well, I'll come back to that in a second. But if that last scenario did apply to this situation, what is the big deal about not letting Frank get his cut of the fight? Well, maybe he's thinking if he were to lose to Buatzi, he is in a bit of a pickle, ain't he? He becomes the CEO of the Huna in club and those big purses dry up significantly, so maximising this purse could be his priority, in case he were to lose. But if this figure of 5 million is true, which I'm not saying it is, then yes, as Frank says, Team Yard really are a long way out of touch. Now I love Anthony Yard, I think he's absolutely brilliant, in and out the ring, double exciting, great personality and I'll always watch him fight. But on paper, his best win is Lyndon Arthur, who he actually lost to the first time round. So how valuable is he really outside of the fact that he can be quite exciting and he showed the heart of a lion against two world champions? I'm not having a go, but that's the kind of difficult truth. Now with the signing of Buatzi and Hutchinson, it just made me think, ah dear yardy me old son, that could have been you instead of Hutchinson earning yourself a shitload of dollar on what will be the biggest British show of the year at Wembley. I mean fair play Willie Hutchinson by the way, but let's be honest, we all wanted yard against Buatzi and it just seems like the opportunity opportunity has been lost by trying to cut out the man who's actually done wonders for your career. Built you at a steady pace, got you two world title fights, stood by you when you lost to Arthur and even sorted you the rematch. As a big fan, I was looking on comparing it to the Eddie Hearn and Tony Bellew partnership that worked so well and I just never saw this coming. Now maybe we've all got it wrong and none of this is Yard's fault, he's totally in the right and Frank's the one getting cheeky. Maybe. But still, Frank is like the Baturbiev of legal battles, and he's gonna be fucking hard to beat. He's been there, done it, and got the t-shirt multiple times, and Altunde and Yard may find they're in a lot deeper than they originally thought. Maybe they'll have to swallow their pride before this gets really ugly and Yard's out the ring for a significant amount of time. However, that's not something you see often in these situations. I'm not saying he's completely fucked up his career, of course not. Hopefully this gets resolved soon. It's just that with Frank flying high, Saudi boxing blossoming and Yard potentially in his prime, the timing couldn't have been worse and he really don't want to let these years slip by. We shall see. So let me know your thoughts below and don't forget to check out the old Sparko store and I'll see you double soon.